by Sri Lanka's best internet package for online learning and online working with many amazing offers. Call 1212 for more information. Sri Lanka Telecom. Lenka, tu kuma wedi karaga ne? Lao ju rupeal panata du kala. Mama, en api te ekak bom. Tonight, COVID spread, virus infections confirmed from the Sri Jawardhanapur University and the Colombo National Hospital. Police call. Police stress on vigilance and adherence to protocols when Grade 5 scholarship examination starts tomorrow. Make a copy of that particular admission. Generally, after the exam, children gather, the parents gather. You should not make any gathering. So soon after the exam, leave the place. Step. The Supreme Court decision on the constitutionality of the draft bill of the 20th Amendment to the Constitution to be presented to Parliament on the 20th. In pursuit of the truth, former IGP rejects allegations of being in a state of slumber in the lead-up to the Easter attacks. All that and much more coming up on 1st at 9, 10th of October 2020. Nava Sunlight Sakura then, Dikukal Pavatina Sakura Mal Suandin. From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana First at Nine. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Thamke Kanaka. Now, let's start off by taking a look at the pandemic situation. With three members of the minor staff at the National Hospital in Colombo testing positive for COVID-19, three wards and an operating theatre were temporarily closed today. In the meantime, as a third-year student of the Faculty of Management of the University of Sri Jawardhanapura tested positive for the virus, the Vice-Chancellor of the University says that all students within hostels are instructed to remain within the premises. Health officials at the base hospital in Panadurab took measures to close the intensive care unit of the hospital temporarily. Hospital officials resorted to these measures after the daughter of one of the nurses, who was admitted to the intensive care unit on the 4th of October, tested positive for COVID-19. The hospital's medical superintendent said that 15 people, including the mother of the infected daughter, staff in the intensive care unit, doctors and patients, were quarantined inside the hospital and were subjected to PCR tests. Jadi sekarang ini kerana kerja kerja itu dah nyata nyata tidak dapat dilatih ini, perhati kerja kerja itu tapi sama ni jadi kerja ini ini, kisma banyak perhati kerja kerja itu nih kisma kini. Selama saya berkemah hati untuk sah rogingi, PCR pariksaan kerja, atau ad pariksaan sahaja, adalah asas tanah untuk yang kerja. The infected girl is identified as a third year student studying at the management faculty of the University of Jayawardenepura. The girl had resided in a private boarding house in the area of Gangoda Villa with two other friends and an aunt of one of the friends. The aunt was, however, identified as an employee of the Minuangoda factory. Vice-Chancellor of the University of Jayavardhanapura, University Professor Sudanta Lianagi, stated that the students currently housed in the Faculty of Management at the university are instructed not to leave the premises. In the meantime, the infected girl was transferred from the base hospital in Panadura to the infectious diseases hospital in Angoda, while her family members residing in the area of Hirana were subjected to PCR tests today. Meanwhile, after a nine-month-old infant tested positive for COVID-19 yesterday at the Lady Ridgeway Hospital, an attendant who had been in the same ward with the infant also tested positive for the virus today. The attendant, who is a resident of Polonaru, had been residing at the Silmata Monastery along the Leslie Ranagala Mavata in Borella and had not been to Polonaru for about a month. Accordingly, the resident of the Silmata Monastery and their contacts were subjected to PCR tests today. Elsewhere, authorities took steps to temporarily close the Dick Ovita fishing harbour today after a fisherman aboard a multi-day trawler tested COVID-19 positive. The patient was identified as a 28-year-old resident of the area of Amak Kandavila in Chilau, had developed a fever while he was on a fishing trip and had then returned to a show, after which he was transferred to the Ragama Teaching Hospital. With that, five others that were aboard the fishing trawler were also directed to quarantine. Health sources say that the patient identified from the area of Amak Kandavila in Chilau had gone on a trip to Nuralia with another patient who had previously tested positive for the virus. 
අඹකඳවිල ප්‍රදේශයේ පළමු ආසාදිතයා සමග ළඟින්ම ඇසුරක් තිබුණු පුද්ගලයෙක් දෙවනි ආසාදිතයා විදිහට වර්තා වෙනවා ඔහු දීවරයා මූදේ ඉඳිදි තමයි යම් රෝග ලක්ෂණ පහළ වීම නිසා දි කොවිට වරායට ඇවිල්ලා එතනින් PCR පරීක්ෂණ කරලා මේ වෙද්දි තහවුරු වෙලා තියෙන රෝගියෙක් කියලා. අලාවත අඹකඳවිල ප්‍රදේශයේ රෝගියා සහ ඔහුගේ ආශ්‍රිතයින් සහ ඔහු සමග ගනුදෙනු කරපු පුද්ගලයින් අපි මේ වෙද්දි සාර්ථකව අඳුනගෙන තියෙන නිසා තව දුරටත් ඉදිරියට පැතිර යාමේ අවදානමක් අපිට පේන්නේ නැහැ. ඒ නිසා සංචරණ සීමා පැනවීමේ අවශ්‍යතාවයක් මේ වෙනකොට ඇති වෙලා නැහැ. In other developments with the curfew being imposed in 18 police areas in the Gampa district, six persons have been arrested for violating curfew regulations within the last day. This places the total number of persons arrested thus far since the curfew was imposed in certain areas in the Gampa district at 97. In the meantime, the total number of active cases within the country stand at 1204, while the number of patients that have recovered thus far stand at 3306. Meanwhile, three members of the minor staff at the National Hospital in Colombo have tested positive for COVID-19. The Minister of Health said that three wards and an operating theatre were temporarily closed following the novel coronavirus situation at the hospital. Safeguard hand sanitizer navatama nishpadana pela neeroki mattiyekata. Now we just received news that 103 more COVID-19 infections are confirmed in Sri Lanka. Two of them are employees of the Minuangura garment factory while the rest are their close contacts. Now this was confirmed by Commander of Sri Lanka Army Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva. Now with two key examinations of the country looming police media spokesperson DIG Ajit Rohan stresses that candidates and their parents should be vigilant as the threat of a community transmission still lingers calling to strictly adhere to health protocols laid down by the government the DIG also rolled out a set of guidelines that should be followed by parents and candidates of the grade 5 scholarship examination which will be held tomorrow Speaking to Indira Yamwata on our current affairs program at Hyde Park on Other Than a 24, DIG Rohana also touched on the reasons behind the heavy reluctance displayed by people to divulge information or to surrender for the quarantine process. The epidemiology unit warned that if COVID-19 clusters are formed within the society, a community spread of the virus will have to be declared. How do you look at this? Because I know you said you have been able to track down on uh, the cases that have been associated, but at the same time, uh, the risk we are looking at is also greater. The SIS is the main agency that is supporting health authorities in order to trace these cases, mm -hmm. especially COVID positive cases and close contacts. Mm -hmm. According to our statistics and the reports that we have already received, we believe that we would be able to control the situation. So however, finally, the EPID unit or the health experts, so they are taking the final mm -hmm. decision and all these things. But on one hand, there is a control, it is visible because especially we have not found mm -hmm. uh, further cases in areas where this curfew uh, has been imposed mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that uh, we don't have a risk how do we see this uh, the tracking down of contacts because these cases we see they have traveled to colombo and certain other places but what is the risk associated when you look at it from an operational perspective the main problem that we need to resolve is the close contacts the family members the inmates so generally we have traced all the employees but uh, sometimes if they don't divulge the truth it is very difficult mm -hmm. to police or the intelligence officers mm -hmm. to trace the way are about so that is the biggest problem why do you think we see this resistance because we've been talking about covid-19 since march is this uh, is there some sort of stigmatization in society or at employment our people still they have not understood the gravity of this mm -hmm. pandemic and apart from that stigma is also involved mm -hmm. you might get covid tomorrow mm -hmm. i might get covid tomorrow but it doesn't mean that i have i mean involved in any bad practice because that is the nature of this disease the president of the usa he got this disease the future king of the uk prince charles he got irrespective of the wealth race religion the citizenship mm -hmm. so everyone is getting this disease mm -hmm. some persons think that if i divulge that i have been reported as a covid positive mm -hmm. patient it is a discrimination sometimes they might think that people in the vicinity the neighbors they will criticize us no covid positive patients or the symptomatic patients should not think in that way it is common to everyone mm -hmm. 
let's take you and I as an example. If you did come into contact with the, somebody from the Minuangura cluster and now I have come into contact with you, yeah. what must I do now? If you are getting the similar symptoms like uh, COVID, you should not go anywhere. Mm. You must stay at home. Please call the nearest police station. You are an attorney at law. You can give us some legal perspective here. What does quarantine law mean? Because there are a lot of questions on how effective this is. What is the purpose and what kind of action authorities can take under this law? Mm -hmm. British rulers. I respect them because of this excellent legal system that they created in our country. So one of the enactments that is related to public health is quarantine and prevention of diseases ordinance. This is not a conventional curfew. As we all know, conventional curfew, once it is imposed, so you cannot go to a road or the thoroughfare. But you know in the vicinity area, the neighbors can get together, they can have parties, everything. Mm -hmm. But here, it's a different type of curfew. The neighbors also, they cannot meet each other. It's a quarantine order. Mm -hmm. So once it is imposed, if a person is going against that notice, he's a lawbreaker. Then he could be dealt with the criminal law of the country. He could be punished with three months rigorous imprisonment and 10,000 rupees fine. And apart from that, he could be arrested without a warrant. Tomorrow we are talking about a big examination for our students and parents are worried, students may be worried, but this is a key examination also for them. Let's talk about how they can face their examinations but also the stringent measures that will be taken by the police security forces. Tomorrow grade 5 uh, scholarship uh, exam uh, is uh, held mm -hmm. and apart from that advanced, advanced level, level examination commencing on Monday. Now we have a special uh, plan in the areas where this curfew is implemented. Mm -hmm. So the examination uh, commissioner general he has uh, introduced special uh, examination centers also. The parents have to identify the correct examination center mm -hmm. that has been allocated for their children because so some children they live in the areas where the quarantine curfew is imposed mm -hmm. but they are school into another school situated in Colombo sometimes. Mm -hmm. Then some some students they live in non curfew areas but their school is situated in the curfew area. Mm -hmm. Because the last moment you don't have a time to select these places and apart from that if you go to a wrong place mm -hmm. then your child is not able to sit for the exam. Right. They have an ad admission card mm -hmm. for the exam. Make a copy, photocopy of that particular admission. Mm -hmm. So keep it with you, I mean the parents. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, generally I believe that at least 40% of uh, the parents, they are having this type of smartphones. So they can make an electronic copy also. Especially I am referring the areas where the curfew is uh, imposed. imposed. Father mm -hmm. or mother or both of them. If they are willing to go with their sure. child, yeah. they can go. But let's say that particular child has another two sisters, younger sisters. Mm -hmm. So don't go along with them. So then again you are exposing them to the, the, the COVID-19. Generally after the exam, children gather, the parents gather. They are going to discuss all the questions. You should not make any gathering. So soon after the exam, leave the place and come to your Residence. Children who might be from homes uh, where their parents or family members or relatives have come into close contact with uh, COVID-19 uh, positive cases or associates. What's the mechanism? Constant announcement uh, had been made by the health authorities and apart from that the examination department, the Ministry of uh, Education. So they have to adhere with uh, these instructions and advices and apart from that we also the police, uh, we have a mechanism to monitor the situation. We are deploying police officers at every and each examination centers. About social media and information, unverified information, people listen to this, watch these or read these and there is a lot of panic created in society. Yeah. And at the same time, 
Uh, I, we did also see a list of names being circulated of COVID-19 positive cases, but this is also an infringement into privacy. If a social media post mm -hmm. divulges the identity of a COVID patient with his or her face and apart from that we are about it is damaging the quarantine procedure the people are reluctant to give their samples for pcr test mm -hmm. therefore if a person is obstructing a quarantine procedure mm -hmm. it is an office my humble request is to not to publish any fake news if you receive a post regarding a news you have a general idea that okay this is a fake or not if you are not able to clarify it go to that website check it verify it otherwise don't share don't forward so you might be a suspect of a criminal office we will see you shortly after this break stay tuned Salem Bank the bank with a heart Welcome back. You're watching First at Nine. Now, the government has put in place various measures to ensure that the Grade 5 scholarship examination, which starts tomorrow, is worked off seamlessly, even in areas under curfew. Now, what needs to be done by both parents and the school children, or candidates, I should say, was mentioned by DIG Drohana before this piece of news. Now, what's more, even students at quarantine centres are provided with special facilities to take the exam. With that, let's take a look at the latest measures taken by the government in this COVID-19 backdrop. Dula Pitiya, Minu Angoda, Tahabe Angoda, Kena Police Bala Pradesh Bala, Paul Hatta Dida Hakwitra Inna, Yam Sahanya Klabad Inna Meve Na Kuda Saka Chawa Pautino, E Mudal Labadi Ma Sanda Gamba District Naik Ma Sanda Antung Ma Tu Ma Tulu Besil Raja Paksh Ma Tu Ma Cabinet Mandal Ete Yojana Wadala Anu Ma Takaragana Tiga Jana Di Pat Tu Ma Agit Nirdesh Aragena Iri Edi Sahanya Salah Salah Dende Pradesh Jana Tawa Ta Bala Purutting Inna. In the meantime, the Ministry of Health seeks people's strict adherence to health and safety protocols put in place when visiting patients at hospitals. As a measure towards arresting the spread of the COVID-19, the Ministry also urges people to keep hospital visitations to a minimum. Issuing a communique also requests people to visit the nearest hospital when seeking medical assistance. Meanwhile, hairstylists and makeup artists are also urged to observe health and safety guidelines as done during the last surge of the novel coronavirus. Various governmental departments took measures to either limit their operations or close their offices with the uptake of COVID-19 cases in the country. In the same vein, the Department of Motor Traffic announced today that its offices in Nara Hinpita and Verahara will be closed for the public from the 12th to the 16th of October. In the meantime, the Grade 5 scholarship examination and the advanced level examination are set to be worked off tomorrow and the day after. 331 694 candidates will be sitting for this year's grade 5 scholarship examination held across 2939 examination centers across the country those examination centers were disinfected today <laughs> meanwhile 12 schools within curfew imposed areas are designated as additional examination centers they were also disinfected today State Minister Sita Aramepola toured the examination centres to look into the health and safety standards of the facilities. What's more, Minister of Education Professor G. L. Pires too inspected some examination centres in Colombo. Speaking on this year's Grade 5 scholarship examination, the Commissioner General of Examination said that special relief is granted for students during this year's examination. Kaling api prasna hatali ay vinadi hatali spahi labadu ne palay ni patre sadha deng ay payda kwa vedi karte bino. Devi ni patre sadha tevi ni sahane aklabadi lati na lamangu emane se matmat vai se matmat balala bahuar ne prasna tihak ti bino. Warna mana dah terjadi punya warna hati rai, warna hati rai tu nada kuat adu kereta bina. Teka mungkin bahagian madyastan itu perwaru atai tiha mana kotak pemini itu bina. Bahagian awam kiri mana ni mete warna perwaru nama ayat tiha itu. What's more, students at quarantine centres too are given the chance to sit for this year's exam. 
ඒ අයට විශේෂ තු විභාග මතය තියෙන පිටුවා තියෙනවා ඒ තෙකම මහරගම අපේක්ෂා රෝහලටත් එතන සිසුන් දෙදෙනෙක් ඉන්නවා අපි අවස්ථාව ලබා දී තියෙනවා ඒ තෙකම IDH රෝහලේ සිසුන් 5 දෙනෙකුටත් අපි මේ අවස්ථාව ලබා දීලා තියෙනවා Given the present pandemic situation in the country health authorities urge those attending examination centers to strictly adhere to health and safety protocols Honda tat deka sodala muka warneya pandagena inna durastha bhavaye pawattagena yanna e vibhage liyana avasthave de dagonta pahasuwak thiyenawa nang muka warneya galawala vibhage liwata kisima gatluwak wenne ne namuth vibhage liyala ewakala nawathath geda ganakota muka warneya pandagena yanno na e wagema yanni sella addeka saban dala hoda ginath ge paslin pitat wenna katyutu karanno na Meanwhile the Sri Lanka Transport Board has put in a special program to provide transport for children in areas where the curfew is imposed. සාමාන්‍ය පරිදි ග්‍රාමීය මාර්ගවලත් බස් රථ ධාවනය කරන හැබැයි ඒ බස් රථ කිසිම කෙනෙක් අයුරකින් විභාග ශාලාවන්නට යන දරුවන් සහ දෙමව්පියන් හැර වෙනත් කිසි කෙනෙකුට බස් රථ වල ගෙනියන් නැහැ. ඒ වගේම මේ බස් රථ ධාවනය කරන්නේ ඇඳිරි නීතිය පැවතින ප්‍රදේශවල විභාග කාල සීමාව තුලදී පමණයි. Looking at how the local news, former Inspector General of Police Pujit Jayasundra was in a defiant mood when testifying before the Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing the Easter Sunday spate of terror today. During the process, Jayasundra rejected the idea put forth by the additional Solicitor General that he was in a state of slumber in the lead-up to the attack. He also highlighted the lack of training on implementing emergency security plans after 2015, which he said prevented any emergency security plan being implemented when there was warnings of an imminent attack. Former Inspector General of Police Pujit Jayasundar, who was in office when the Easter Sunday terror attacks took place last year, gave evidence before the Presidential Commission probing the attacks for the 11th day today. The additional solicitor general of the state then asked the witness as to why he was in a state of slumber when the state intelligence service and the army intelligence unit had been continuously giving notifications on extremism and zaharan's activities in response the former igp rejected the allegation of being in a state of slumber elaborating further the former igp said quote i was banned from the national security council when kapila vaidya ratna was asked whether to send another officer the response was that it will be notified if the need arises the political environment state policies and the conflicts which arose within the government heavily contributed to these incidents unquote The additional solicitor general then asked the witness whether the Sri Lanka police had an emergency security plan to be implemented during an emergency. The witness responded, quote, "The security box at each police station contains a plan which is implemented during an emergency situation. That plan had been continued for over a considerable time. The IGP used to have a separate operations room. It had the capability to link with all the police stations in the country and mobilize. But after 2015, not just the police, the entire governance mechanism focused on other priorities. As such, there wasn't training to how to implement these emergency plans." Unquote. The chairman of the commission then asked the witness as to why senior DIGs were not convened and an emergency security plan was not implemented when director of SIS Nilantha called on the 20th of April and said that there will be an attack the next day. The former IGP responded, quote, "I did not have time then to hold discussions. What I wanted to do was convey information. As such I made the senior DIGs under me aware." Unquote. The chairman of the commission then asked him, quote, "It looks like what you have done is to appoint subordinates to each place. Does your duty end there?" Unquote. Former IGP Pujit Jayasundar replied, quote, "As the IGP, I don't take part in operations. What I do is orchestrate the operations from somewhere." Unquote. The additional solicitor general then asked the witness whether he acted as the chief of the Department of Law and Order or as a messenger. The reply of the former IGP was that the IGP becomes a messenger during certain instances. Now the secret decision of the Supreme Court regarding the constitutionality of the draft bill of the 20th amendment to the constitution has been referred to the Speaker of Parliament. Commenting on the matter, Speaker Mahinda Yapabevardhan said that the relevant decision will be presented to the Parliament on the 20th of October. The Supreme Court concluded the consideration of petitions filed challenging the draft bill on the 5th of October. Chief Justice Janta Jayasuri had stated in open court that the secret decision of the Supreme Court on the draft bill will be referred to the President and the Speaker of Parliament in due course. During the hearing Attorney General Dapula de Oliveira stated that all the provisions contained in the draft of the 20th amendment to the constitution are in accordance with the constitution. 
39 petitions in total had been filed against the draft bill, citing the Attorney General as the respondent. We will see you shortly. Bear with us. Welcome back. You are watching First at Nine. Now, oil prices slipped more than 1% yesterday after an oil worker strike in Norway ended. Brent futures fell 1.1% to settle at $42.85 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude fell 1.4% to settle at $40.60. Despite yesterday's price slide, both benchmarks gained about 9% this week, their first increase in three weeks and the biggest weekly rise for Brent since June. Oil futures climbed earlier in the week due to concerns the strike in Norway and the hurricane headed for the U.S. Gulf Coast would cut crude output. Norwegian oil firms struck a wage bargain with labor union officials yesterday, ending a 10-day strike that had threatened to cut the country's oil and gas output by close to 25 percent next week. Also weighing on prices were doubts voiced by Republicans in the U.S. Senate that a coronavirus economic stimulus deal could be reached before the 3rd of November election. Now, hopes for a sizable U.S. stimulus package helped drive gains for stocks yesterday as the S&P 500 index capped off its best week since early July. The Dow Jones Industrial Average closed up about 0.6% at 28,587 yesterday. The S&P 500 and the Nasdaq Composite added 0.9% and 1.4% respectively. Stocks endured a string of weekly losses but have bounced back in the past two weeks. The S&P 500 index rose 3.8% on the week while the Nasdaq Composite and the Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 6.4% and 3.3% respectively. The Stocks Europe 600 index rose 0.4% in a mixed day for European stocks, while in Asia, China's CSI 300 index gained 2% as investors returned from a weekly holiday. Now, Microsoft has told staff that they will have the option of working from home permanently with the approval of the manager. The move mimics the U.S. tech giants' rivals Facebook and Twitter, which, which have revealed, which have also said, I should say, that remote work would be a permanent option. It follows a rapid shift away from office working prompted by the coronavirus pandemic. Many companies are reconsidering how much office space they need, expecting a long-term increase in remote staff. Microsoft said some roles will continue to require an in-person presence, such as those needing access to hardware. But many staff will also be working, will also be able to work from home part-time without needing formal approval from their managers. And that's it from all of us here at First at Nine. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.